My name is Jessica Zavadovich. I'm an artist based in Philadelphia. Um, I'm a recent graduate of the University of the Arts, also in Philadelphia, and I'm here at the Watershed Residency in Bushy Park. Park. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. <for> having me. <laughs> it's a pleasure so, uh, to have you here. I can't, hear to be, can't wait to see what you come up with. Yeah, and how long you. are you here for? Um, I've been here for just under a month, three Perfect. or so weeks. Yeah. Perfect. And you yeah. have two more months with us here. Yeah, I'm here Amazing. to the end of 2019, which is exciting. Yeah. So can you tell us a bit about your work, please? Yeah, generally I'm an oil painter and I like to go, I like to paint large, usually figurative works. Um, but here I'm kind of really like entrenched in the landscape and kind of a very intuitive nature. My work is, I would say, process-based in general. Yeah. Um, and so I work a lot like on the studio walls, on the ground kind of get paint everywhere as part of like enveloping myself in the work um and i would i like to paint uh, definitely representational but yeah. also like paint while i'm not looking at anything so i'm observing while i'm in the natural world walking around and kind of i bring that research with me like wherever i am okay. and then when i'm in the studio it kind of flows out naturally intuitively mm. working with like scale Contrasting colors, high contrast colors, yeah. high saturation. Um, I love to play with like the difference of the subtlety and texture that mimics the natural world or the natural environment, mm. and always thinking about the connection of like the internal environment and so like the non-physical spiritual nature of people or of the land, and then connecting it with the very tangibleness that we are dealt with every day and experience in our physicalness. Amazing. And um, what brought you to Ireland? Um, well, my work is really important on like being in different locations and like different spaces and experiencing like a new sense of self or a new sense of other in a different location. And so after I graduated school, like traveling was like a must do. And I came to Ireland because I have personal heritage here, and so I feel like kind of pulled to come back and like learn more about like the roots of oneself yeah and i've always wanted to come to galway on the west side of ireland and so okay, amazing yeah yeah and weren't you in the burn before yeah i was in the yeah. burn for a one month residency last year in valley Vaughan, which was an incredible experience because it was nothing like um philadelphia at all yeah and it was totally like a different a different landscape in a sense it felt like a different world or like a different planet and so it was a really interesting yeah like space to encompass right. and bring that into the work um and how do you think your work has developed since you left philadelphia i think time? a lot has developed internally so far and like a lot more like different process of thinking about what I'm wanting to paint, like how is that important, how do I want this to affect the viewer, or why am I putting this out into the environment. And so I feel like I'm just getting to like the beginning of the painting stride, or like okay. the making stride. And the fun part. <laughs> yeah, the fun part, <laughs> the, the physical part. And so like a lot of internal exploration of myself and like in different spaces and like kind of remaking new identities in each different place in each kind of phase of my life, mm -hmm. my young life, yeah. and how my painting's developing. It feels less figurative, but also having like very human quality in it, yeah. and more gestural, kind of less, um, like less structure that is leading up to it, or perhaps a new type of structure. Yeah. So, kind of... Yeah, creating something entirely from scratch, from scratch, That's outside fun. of an academic setting. Okay. Um, and how is, uh, do you miss the academic setting or do you prefer being free? It, it's an interesting, like, love hate relationship. When I was in it, I was like, I need to leave, like, I can't be here, I need to be free. And then when you're outside of it, it's something you've kind of always known in yeah. some capacity or any structure you've known or kind of, like, been in placed in you're like now what or like kind of reaching for stuff that would normally be there yeah but now you have to kind of like make that yourself yeah you and to. so i'm grateful for the experience of being in that structure but more so to be able yeah. to create my own now perfect um 
And what type of artists do you look to for inspiration or do you? Yeah, I look, I mean, I look also at like a lot of philosophy, or like Eastern philosophy or Eastern like religions, yeah. talking about like physicality and non-physicality. But I also look at like a bunch of contemporary painters, figurative painters like Andrew Dufresne, Jennifer Packer, Jordan Castile, Duran Lamberg, a lot of artists, um, like large kind of big, like, mm, like emotion capturing paintings, a lot of color. Yeah. Um, and then also non-figurative painters like Erin Laurie, Laurie from Toronto and then Michael Newart. And so they work a lot with like color and texture mm -hmm. and kind of like abstracted form, but it mirrors the external environment. And I have some photos like kind of posted around of them. Rather inspiration, yeah. Yeah, kind of as like, I really, really admire their painting and like how they use the material itself is really important for me. Yeah. So the physical aspect of painting yeah, is important. Yeah. Like the yeah. f like the physicality of the medium itself and using different mediums to create different textures of the paint to make it matte, to make it gooey or like creamy or really um, like to water it down and okay. kind of playing with all these different textures. Interesting. Yeah, and like bringing it all together where there's some sense of clarity but also like like a really nice balance of chaos. Oh, okay. Yeah. If that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. So what type of tools do you use? Because I see a lot of different brush strokes. Yeah, I use a lot of uh, large brushes, small brushes. I use um, like a lot of palette knives that I scrape back into the paint. Or I use even like pastel sticks to scrape back into it. And um, squeegees, like flat squeegees, squeegees with um, these like edges in them. Yeah. And so it's all creating like different structure yeah. in this texture that I see outside in the environment and how do I bring it like together in a visual image. Interesting. Uh, do you have any questions? Um, where do you see your work going in the future? That's a great question, Michael. Thank you. That was Michael Klinsinger based on Virginia. <laughs> um, where do I see it going? I see it getting bigger, literally. Physically. Um, and I see myself learning how to paint. I feel like I'm just learning how to paint correctly. Or act, like being able to use the medium in the way like I can see it. And then how do you like transfer that to your arms? Like, through your hands, through your body. And seeing it take some type of like role in the way that like perception is based. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what else? Any questions you'd like us to ask? You? I, I can edit this. So. Um. I'm not sure. I feel like as I think about it, like things will come to me later. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that would have been good to say. But it's kind of just like. I feel like I'm at a really interesting point in my life that yeah. is always for me connected with the work I'm in or making. And it's like all these shells, all these layers are kind of like letting go. So I'm like figuring it all out through the work. And oh, interesting. So for You're... me, it's as much as like a self-practice as a studio practice. Yeah. Judging by the colors, it seems like you're in a very happy time of your life. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely no blue period here. <laughs> yeah. No, I do. I love colors. I feel like that's a way, like that's like a certain language for me, mm -hmm. a personal one I've always had. Where sometimes words don't actually describe the sense that I'm getting. And so like a certain color kind of just captures that. Okay. And yeah, I feel good. <laughs> yeah. I like being here. And... Yeah, I'm just really exploring in an intentional way. And from your previous work, I've noticed that you did a few, a lot of self-portraits. Yeah. Um, can you explain more about your self-portraits? Yeah, the self-portraits, well, I wanted to practice figure painting and I was always available for me to paint. Oh, okay. And so I would do that, but it was also very much like this looking inside, like self-introspection, very self-gazed and wanting like the viewer to feel this self-gaze from the image back to themselves to okay. create some type of like real internal dialogue within oneself. Yeah. And it, they were, those were really important for me to like discover what I want to paint or like 
why am I painting or what is important to me? And so those images were kind of like self-created tools to like better understand like my own psyche or my own internal environment, which is really yeah. like really meta sometimes. Amazing. Yeah. Um. Uh, you like the languages, so I love languages. does how does that does that influence your work, or oh is it just God, a hobby? Such a good question. No, it totally does. In maybe not like a super straightforward way at all, and but like I'm into languages. I'm into different like structures and systems of communication, of connecting. And so for me, it's all about like how we connect with each other, with our environment, with our like internal self. And then how are all these different components, like in the natural world, they all seem separate, but for me, they're all really intertwined. And languages, I find super fascinating because they're all these different ways that mass people have agreed upon as like the structure that we all use. Mm -hmm. And you can like be born in a different language and have a whole different perception of the world or the way you speak the way you think can change the way that you act in the space that you're in. And learning languages is like learning a new perception of the world. Mm -hmm. And I think about like painting too, or any type of art making really. Okay. It's a new language. Yeah. Uh, Michael, do you have a yeah. Um, could you pass me a cracker? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You should keep that question up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Raw. <laughs> Jessica, would you like a cracker? <laughs> I can help myself. Thanks. Okay. Um, uh, think. Try to think now. It should be interesting to see, like, in December, like, at the end of this time here, like, what's actually been created. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything coming up for your work uh, after you leave Ireland? After I leave Ireland? Um, I just actually got my some of my work in Philadelphia in like a private collection, so it's in like a different exhibition space. Mm -hmm. And I have shows coming up that I have to actually be in the country for in Philadelphia mm -hmm. if I go back. But I'm actually looking to go to Russia Yeah. Um, to be a part of a different type of residency and then also um, expand upon my Russian language. Fluency. Can you or speak a bit of Russian for us? I don't know if I can speak Subtitles to come. You had. Portraits. Yeah, those are Rebecca. Rebecca's portraits of me, which are really interesting to look at. <laughs> Edit that part out. Yeah. No, they're really, like, kind of curious images. And the image behind your head, what, what, was, what inspired that this. painting? Oh, this was the first, that was like the first thing I painted when I got here, and it was just a still life. And so, it might not look anything like a still life or any kind of physical representation at all. Yeah. So I tend to start from physical observation and then when I start painting it just goes to like like a more fluid kind very of. fluid, more painterly, gestural kind of like how I'm relating to it in paint rather than like what it looks like or yeah. like what it's supposed to look like. You have a few quotes on the wall. Wait, can you read one for us? Uh, um, or idea, sorry. There's a lot of stuff on them. The madder, the better. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, don't regret that. Yeah, okay. Some of these, what is this? Ideas, interesting thought, sketches. Sketches not used as prelim, smaller work, idea for painting, but part of the entire process, preparing for painting, preparing for preparing, getting prepared to be prepared. <laughs> Release figure into bliss, internal scapes, fusing energy into image, physical, non-physical. 
ways, textures, lines, segments, colors, portals, tunnels, thickness, thinness, opening, vastness, gentleness, loudness. So there's sound happening apparently. Interweaving together in, out, under, over, color, waves, <laughs> visible. And then I have some titles which were just kind of like, I don't really know where they come from and they don't really look like they represent the work. But let me read them to you if you really want. It's One says, openings, 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 I'm in love, yellow. And then let's run naked through the forest and feel the earth like our ancestors did. So there you That's go. That's match. <laughs> <laughs> love it. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's think. Uh, you have a sticky note on your big painting there. It says, yes. Yeah, that says space to rest. Two exclamation points. This one, I'm still working into it. And so, yeah, space to rest. When I first started to paint a couple years ago, it was like, I was like so enamored by like the possibility of like a new type of texture, a new color, and I was just like, boom, more than this, believe it or not. <laughs> and I'm learning like as much as like the chaoticness and the color and kind of all these different movements are really exciting and important for me, the space to kind of breathe is just as important to balance that like really energeticness, especially in an image that's contained within like like a rectangle. Like there needs to be some space for the rest to kind of be fluid. Yeah. If that's what you want. I'm looking for a certain type of balance and so that's what I always try to space figure to out think. how can I create space. Interesting. Yeah. It's a very valuable lesson. Yeah. Teach it's people. a good teaching tool. Yeah. Um I think. Can you describe where you're going with the uh, pink painting you started over here? Yeah, so this is just an underpainting and so when I start paintings I like to just sometimes just get kind of like a light color down so it's not just like this white gessoed thing screaming at my face and I kind of go in intuitively a bit with like different brush strokes or let the texture of the gesso, because I don't sand it before I paint, kind of emerge. And I like to use each layer as I create new layers of the painting like to come forth and kind of determine where I go next rather than like placing a predetermined uh, structure of placement onto something. I kind of let it show me where it wants to be painted. <laughs> Sounds, um, a bit like silly but it's really an intuitive process for me when I'm painting and kind of everything else that I do <laughs> and so but placing it next to like smaller paintings or I have like a little postcard of a waterfall next to it whether or not it will be like reflected from that whatsoever is at some point but having like kind of a clear structure next to something that's really open and like a lot can happen, creates that balance that I need in the studio. Good question. Um, we have your final 30 seconds. <laughs> um, what haven't I said so much? Is there anything you'd like to say to people or ask a question? Hmm. I would say what I would say to people. I always keep looking. Class. Yeah. <laughs> I think we finish on that. <laughs> <laughs>